The final round of the 2016 Asia Student Supercomputer Challenge was held at Huajong University of Science and Technology in Wuhan, Hubei Province from April 20th to the 22nd. The school went on to win the overall championship after a two-day contest. Xiaowei Shui reports. Two tough days of supercomputer challenges from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Wednesday and Thursday. Sixteen teams from universities in six countries were busy coding to build clusters and applications with a 3,000 web power limit on the final context of this year's challenge. They also needed to demonstrate the best performance across a series of benchmarks. One of our computers broke in the middle of the contest. We fixed it and rebooted it, and then we found all of our programming was gone. I think the biggest rivals for us have always been the Tsinghua University. They, we faced them back in SC15 in Austin, and they did a pretty good job over there. So they've always been like our biggest rival here. The event is one of the world's top three supercomputer contests, on a par with the USSC and Germany ISC. This year's contest started this January and attracted 175 teams of 148 universities from six continents. It also provided a platform to connect experts from academic institutes and engineers from enterprises to share updated perspectives. On Friday afternoon, the judging panel announced that Huazhong University of Science and Technology won the overall championship. <laughs> Since 2013, we have taken part in many world student supercomputer contests and won the highest computing performance award, an e-prize calculation challenge award. But it's our first time to win the overall championship. We're so excited. Computers may have become an integral part of many people's daily lives, but supercomputing technology remains something of a niche. But actually, China is already a superpower in the field. Tianhe too, with a performance of 33.86 petaflops of computing power, made it the world's most powerful and fastest supercomputer. In 2001, there were zero supercomputers in China. And today, China is the number two country with supercomputers, having about, um, uh, we have this, uh, the list which contains the 500 fastest computers. China has uh, over 100 computers on that list. The U.S. is the only country that uh, has more. And to see that growth, to see that investment in high-performance computing is really uh, stunning, I would say. The supercomputers that we made are the fastest in the world. But it does not mean that we are in the leading positions in all fields. We are not on the same level as other global powers in developing supercomputing applications. So we can say we have joined the first echelon of the supercomputers, where the U.S., Japan and some European countries are, but we still have the responsibility to make it better. Since Google's supercomputer AlphaGo outsmarted South Korean Go champion Lee so do winning 4-1 to one in the best-of-five game series that came to an end this March. Supercomputers have gained worldwide attention, and people have begun to wonder whether the ever-changing role of artificial intelligence will one day pose a threat to human society. Supercomputers are not far away from our daily lives. We use them in many areas, for instance, weather forecasting, drug trials, and many special effects in movies. We also use them in automobiles industries to make safer cars. These supercomputer contacts help us find and cultivate outstanding students and boost innovation capacities of the technologies. Xiao Ruxue, CCTV, Wuhan, Hubei Province.